Over the last several months, despite the fact that I have made it very clear many times that I don't really enjoy focusing in on negative things, negative topics on this channel, I have done exactly that with regard to Samsung and their Z Fold devices. I have had the unfortunate task of pointing out a few different times in a few different ways that the sales of the Z Fold series are slipping. The Fold 5 sold less than the Fold 4, and the Fold 6 is apparently selling less than the Fold 5. As other OEMs around the world are entering the book-style folding phone market, companies like OnePlus, which happen to have uh, their phone OnePlus open right here in my hand, great device, absolutely tremendous phone. And of course, Vivo, Honor, Google, Xiaomi, Huawei, all of these companies producing absolutely outstanding phones. Huawei in particular, chewing into the foldable market share that Samsung once had 80% of. It is dropping like a stone. Huawei, like I said, eating into that very, very rapidly. I had to point these things out as Samsung kind of doesn't innovate a whole lot in this space anymore with subsequent phones, really three, four, five, and six of the Fold models being nearly identical. Yes, they are great phones, and yes, the Fold 6 is a tremendous, amazing phone, but with these other brands pushing the specs even harder, they have seen their market share suffering, and I've talked about that. And like I said, I don't like talking about negative stuff. Like It's not something that I really get like a kick out of doing. It normally starts almost like arguments in the comments, which I really don't enjoy reading, so it's not something that I am drawn towards doing. I also don't dislike Samsung. In fact, maybe you guys watched this video a year ago where I talked about my top five favorite phones of all time, and I told you that the Z Fold 4 was in my top five phones of all time. I don't dislike Samsung or the Z Fold devices. I think that they are really, really good. But you have to call a spade a spade. Today, we're going to try to kind of twist this and maybe not be quite as negative. Let's try and find a positive thing to talk about. And I think that maybe we have just that. We have on this website, news.samsung.com, a post to our customers, investors, and employees. This is something that was posted actually several days ago, and it hasn't really gotten a whole lot of attention. We're going to quickly read it. This is from Samsung Electronics uh, DS Division Vice Chairman, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce that because I know I'm going to butcher and it's going to be disrespectful. You can read it there. But this is from a higher up in Samsung, and I think this should be getting a bit more attention. Now, bear in mind, this is being translated from Korean, so I may sort of change some phrasing here if I feel like maybe the translation was a little bit weird. We'll just kind of work our way through it. To our customers, investors, and employees who have always loved Samsung Electronics, today we, the management of Samsung Electronics, would like to first apologize to you. So that's pretty strong, right? They're putting out a thing just straight up saying, we're sorry. The performance that fell short of market expectation has raised concerns about the fundamental technological competitiveness in the future of the company. Many people are talking about Samsung's crisis. All of this responsibility lies with us who are leading the business. So, talking about how they are falling short. Obviously, the folding phones are where your mind is first going to go, but they've had some sales issues in general, so we can't necessarily say it's just with the folding phones, but I think logically that is a large part of this. So, Samsung has a history of challenge, innovation, and overcoming that has always turned crisis into opportunities. We will definitely make the serious situation we are currently facing into an opportunity for a leap forward. Our management will take the lead in overcoming the crisis. Above all, we will restore the fundamental competitiveness of technology. Technology and quality are our lifeblood. It is Samsung Electronics' pride that we can never compromise on. Rather than short-term solutions, we will secure fundamental competitiveness. Furthermore, I believe that only new technologies that do not exist in the world and perfect quality competi competitiveness are the only ways for Samsung Electronics to make a comeback. We will rekindle our unique passion to fearlessly pioneer the future and to cling to our goals until the end and achieve them. And you can read the rest of this from here. I'm going to leave it up on screen so you can kind of pause and read it if you want. But what this says to me 
more than anything I've ever seen from Samsung, or if I'm being honest, from like, I don't know that I've ever seen an OEM just come straight out and say this and say that, yeah, we're having some problems. They describe it as a crisis and then saying, we are going to be more competitive. We are going to pursue new technologies. That's what we've always done. We have pushed the edge. We have pioneered these technologies and we're going to get back to doing that. I think this should be very encouraging if you are a fan of Samsung. Now, look, this could all be lip service. They could just be saying these things because they're hearing the criticisms and maybe nothing's actually going to change. But at this starting point, I can't imagine them doing a lot better than this. They are acknowledging, straight up acknowledging, the complaints that people have had. They're admitting that they are true, that they have not been as competitive. They've not been pioneering the way that they have in the past. That has been what always made them what they were, and they're going to try to do it again. Now, that's where things get tricky. How does this actually go from here? That remains to be seen. But I think that they are fully recognizing that they have been too iterative and that that has to change, literally going as far as describing this as a crisis. Ultimately, we're going to have to wait to see what these next phones begin to look like. What does the Z Fold 7 look like? The S25 Ultra. I would imagine that they've been in works for a while. So unless this has been a thought that they've had for a couple of years, they may remain sort of on this iterative path. It may take a couple of generations before you really start to see changes. Hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully they've kind of been thinking about this for a while and those devices are going to be fairly radically different and they're going to sort of do what Samsung used to always do and that is push the envelope. But bare minimum, this is a statement that I was very, very pleased to see and I would love to know what you guys think about this. Do you think it's just lip service or just saying what they think people want to hear? How do you feel about an OEM like Samsung being this open and communicating in this way? Personally, I would love to see more companies do this. Google, I'm looking at you. Microsoft, maybe even more so, I'm looking at you. Talk about this stuff. If you think that there's a problem and everyone knows it, acting like it's not there, it's just stupid. Admitting it and saying, that, yeah, okay, we see it. We're going to try to work on it. That is only going to endear you to people as far as I'm concerned. But again, I'd love to hear what you guys think about this in the comments down below. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.